All right, today we're going to be inspecting the steering linkage on a heavy truck, and we're going to be following the Dana Spicer tie rod inspection procedure, um, in particular to inspect the tie rod ends. Uh, it gives us step-by-step -step directions of what we're looking for. Step number one has us checking the threaded portion of the tie rod end for proper engagement in the cross tube. There is a slot, as you notice here in the cross tube, you want to make sure those threads are engaged all the way to the bottom and possibly beyond of that slot. You can use a small pick tool or a screwdriver, try and poke in there. If there is an opening or an end to the threads um, that you can see, that is not threaded in far enough and it risks uh, becoming separated while the truck is in use, which would obviously be very dangerous. So you want to first check that for proper thread engagement. Second, they have you check and make sure that the cross tube is not damaged. You want to look for any signs of cracks, um, any damage to the cross tube or the clamps. They cannot be repaired or welded. So if they are damaged, they need to be replaced. We'll see also in step number six, they tell you never to use any type of uh, tool on here, such as a pipe wrench, that would leave marks. Uh, if they, when you're performing alignment and turning the cross tube, you want to make sure you protect it from any damage. If there are tooth marks in there, that's a risk uh, of causing a crack. For our third step, you're going to inspect the tie rod end boot. So you want to clean the grease and any dirt off this boot. You want to make sure the boot is not torn or damaged in any way. If this boot becomes torn, it's going to allow grease, or sorry, it's going to allow dirt to get into the, the greased area of the tie rod end, and it's going to cause excessive wear. If you do find a torn boot, that tie rod end needs to be replaced. You cannot simply uh, just replace the boot because dirt will have already gotten into the tie rod end. For the fourth step, they tell you to make sure the tie rod end is properly torqued. Now, you'll notice that most tie rod ends are fast fastened with a castle nut, which requires the use of a cotter pin. If that cotter pin is still intact, you can be reasonably assured that that castle nut is still at the proper torque and everything is fine. If one comes in without a um, cotter pin, you're going to want to check the torque of that castle nut, retorque it, and install a new cotter pin. For the fifth step, you need to check for proper positioning of the clamp that secures the tie rod end to the cross tube. And the correct clamp orientation is to have the bolt on the back side, the rear side of the cross tube, with the nut facing down. Now you'll notice that this one here is not positioned properly. Our bolt is not on the back side, and if we did turn this clamp, or when we do turn this clamp, the nut would be facing up. So both this clamp have to be turned, and then the bolt needs to be flipped over. For the sixth step, I mentioned it already, that is telling you not to use a pipe wrench. So make sure you use something with jaw protectors whenever you're turning a cross tube. And for our seventh step, they tell you to check the grease fitting. Most tie rod ends will have a grease fitting usually coming out of the bottom. You want to make sure that grease fitting is not snapped off. Uh, make sure it's in good condition. And one point to make here is when you do service and remove and replace a tie rod end, always start by removing that grease fitting to prevent damage to it. Because if it snaps off, now you have to get off the get, remove the broken piece as well as replace the grease fitting. All right, so we're going to check the tie rod end for wear using a dial indicator. Uh, Spicer gives a recommendation or two specifications and, and two ways to check for play in the tie rod end. We're going to start by checking axial play. And to do that, you're going to want to clip the base of the dial indicator on the tie rod arm, also known as the Ackerman arm. And you're going to position the dial indicator on the bottom of the tie rod end uh, and make sure the needle has preload. You want to make sure it's pushed up, just like when, always when we use a dial indicator, that there's some clearance at the bottom for the dial. So I'm going to adjust this a little bit. And now we're installed to check axial play. You can see the preload that we have there. To check axial play, we're going to pull up and down on the cross tube and see how much the needle moves. Now, a lot of technicians feel like they need to zero the dial of the gauge, which you can if you want, but you can also just count the number of lines it moves. In most cases, a good tie rod end have, should have very little movement, just a few thousandths. When we pull up and down on this one, we see that that needle is barely moving, maybe one thousandths of movement. According to Spicer and their specifications, if we have 60 thousandths of movement or more, that tie rod end needs to be replaced immediately and the vehicle should not be allowed on the road. 
If we have 30 thousandths or less, that indicates a tie rod end that is wearing out but still has usable life, they say that it should be replaced at the next service interval. So basically the part should be ordered and on hand. Next time the truck or vehicle comes in for service, that tie rod end would be replaced. They also mention about checking the tie rod end for radio play, which to do that, it would be much easier with the wheel removed. You can do that for either one of these. And for radio, you would push it, uh, position the dial indicator in line with the cross tube. For axial, we were positioned up and down. Radio, you'd be positioned sideways. And instead of pulling up and down, you would push and pull in line with the vehicle. But same specifications. More than 60 thousandths of movement radially is a problem. And the tie rod end needs to be replaced immediately. And if it's 30 thousandths or less, it can remain in service. It just needs to be replaced at the next inter service interval.